G'day guys, welcome to the Facebook Fix Ups where I'll answer the questions on Facebook in a five minute period in the hope that it may help others. Stephen Keith asked through the week a few questions about hairspray chipping. Stephen wrote, how dry or cured does the hairspray or chipping fluid, if you like, need to be? And then how dry or cured does the top coat of acrylic need to be before attempting water chipping? So to answer Stephen's question, you don't have to wait for anything other than the hairspray or the chipping fluid that you're using to be touch dry and then you're good to go and apply your top layer of paint. So once that top layer or that colored layer it has had time to touch dry, which in most cases is usually only five or 10 minutes, you're good to apply your water and then start your chipping effects. So as a general rule, the longer you leave the paint applied, the harder it becomes to chip it off the model. For those of you who are unaware of hairspray chipping, it is a technique that we use in the hobby that helps create realistic looking paint chips and layered effects. The effect works by first considering the color that you want your chips to be and then painting the model in that color. For instance, if you're wanting to chip a tank, you might use dark brown, rusty, deep tones. Or if you wanted to chip the wing root on a plane, you might want to consider using an aluminum color. Yes, most hairsprays will do the trick, but I would recommend if you're just new to this hobby or starting out with this technique, use dedicated chipping fluid from one of the main manufacturers in the hobby because at least that way you know it'll work if you follow the steps. The other advantage of a dedicated chipping fluid is you can spray it through your airbrush which will give you greater control of the application. This is not something that can be brush applied, it must be sprayed through your airbrush. I find for me two coats of chipping fluid is the sweet spot. Apply your first coat, wait till that one's dry, which is usually around 10 minutes, then apply your second coat, and then you're ready for your top coat of paint to go on. But experiment with different chipping fluids because they all behave slightly differently, so you may find it works differently for you. You might be better off doing one coat or three coats. The mechanism behind this technique is we are introducing water to the surface of the model. That water will migrate through that top layer of paint, which will reactivate that chipping fluid. And when we scrub or scratch at the surface, it allows that top layer of that colored paint to break up and chip like normal natural paint would. Depending on the paint you're using will determine the working window of time you've got to apply your effects. Acrylics will give you the greatest window of working time, which is up to maybe three or four days, although that may vary depending on the chipping fluid and the paint. Whereas lacquers will give you quite a small window of time, generally speaking, which might be you'd want to sort of get at, get at them within the day and uh, get your effects done and dusted. So things to remember when using this technique, plan your paintwork before you start. It's really important to understand what you're trying to achieve in order to execute that properly. When applying the chipping fluid, multiple light coats is the best. Do not flood the model because that will not work. And speaking of flooding, be sure not to flood the top coat of color because that will potentially reactivate the chipping fluid, affecting the ability to execute the technique. A couple of light misted coats, building the coverage up is always the best idea. Different brushes and tools chip differently, so don't be afraid to experiment. Some paints will chip easier than others. However, you can use this technique with all types of paints. Less is more, show some restraint when you're doing your chipping. This is an effect that can get away from you very quickly. Once you're happy with the effect, be sure to seal it in place using a varnish so as not to reactivate it with future layers that you might apply to the model. And most importantly, have some fun with it. This is such a fun, enjoyable technique to use on your models. Just go with it, experiment and enjoy it. Hopefully that helps some of you who may have had the same questions as Stephen. And I'll be looking to do a few more of these Facebook fix ups, if you like, some short, sharp videos to answer a few questions and hopefully get the conversation started. If you'd like some more information on how chipping fluid works, 
comment below and I'll put something more elaborate together for you. Remember guys, this is the greatest hobby in the world. Share it with your family, share it with your friends and let's be proud of what we do. I'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Little chipper. People still say chipper. Apparently.